Okay, welcome everyone um, to the 44th online lecture series, um, proudly presented by uh, Masa, uh, with the title Book Talk Bajautopia, The Tales of Bo C Borneo Sea Nomads, proudly presented by Masa. Hope you guys are doing well and thank you again for joining us for tonight. Um, so for those who are new, let me introduce what Masa is. MASA stands for Malaysian Architecture Student Alliance and is a non-profit student committee acting directly under PAM, which is the Putuban Architect Malaysia. Consisting of student representatives from all architecture institutes in Malaysia. Um, so during the time of MCO, MASA and PAM have decided to launch this um, online lecture series for students to be more productive and gain more insights. Um, architect Adrianta is the head of PAM Education and Dr. Zach Zairul is the converter. Um, my name is Guma Sylvester Makajul, a MASA representative from UCSR University, and I will be your um, moderator for tonight. Um, so let's introduce tonight's guest. So first of all, um, Dr. Ng Keng Kun uh, is the head of uh, postgraduate studies at the School of Architecture and Built Environment, UCSI University, Malaysia. He has an interdisciplinary PhD in architecture uh, from the uh, National University of Singapore, um, prior to that, he was trained as an architect at uh, University of Technology Malaysia, or uh, UTM. He then pursued his master's degree at Oxford uh, Brookes University in UK. He has also worked for several years um, at architecture firms in Penang, Singapore, and London. Um, Ken Kun's research interests focus on architecture, urban planning, and critical urban studies, especially the context of Southeast Asia cities. He is passionate into, uh, to the advance of public discourse on um, urban equality and soci socio-spatial justice in and beyond Malaysia. All right, um, I'll introduce about um, architect Farah, um, Aliza Baharudin. Um, she's a licensed, licensed architect in Malaysia and is a graduate from the Bartlett Faculty of Built Environment, University College London, UK, and also uh, University Technology Mara. She's established uh, Farah Baharudin, um, architect, and also co-founded Mike Foxtrot Imaginarium with her partner, uh, Mior Harris, uh, working together as a collaborative duo. Their work on utilitarian missionary illust and illustrations on high-tech utopias have been published and exhibited in Tokyo, London, and Kuala Lumpur. She, uh, her continued passion for industrial heritage and indigenous culture studies have, uh, has been manifested while teaching at UCSI University, um, especially Unit F Studio, and her pastimes includes traveling, digital painting, and watching films, anime, and uh, neo noir. All right, so sit back and relax. We'll have a Q and A session at the end of the talk. But if you have any questions during the um, sharing, please uh, feel free to type them down in the chat box or at the uh, if you're looking at the from Facebook, you can type that type them in in the comments um, so we can attend, attend to them at the end of the sharing. All right, so without further ado, let's welcome uh, Dr. Ken Kun and architect Farah. Hi, Thank how you are you long. tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard uh, architect Farah has a, 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 a sudden uh, event just now <laughs> with, oh. the, with the blackout. Uh, good that you are uh, managed uh, to join us in time. Okay. Um, so I will leave the floor to you guys. Thanks. All right, I will start the presentation. Um, thank you, Guma, for the introduction. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening. Um, firstly, me and Ken Kun would like to thank Masa uh, for inviting us today and especially to the audience for spending our Thursday night just to chill and listen to a book talk on our recent publication, the uh, Bajautopia Tales of Borneo's Sea Nomads. So we hope to share something meaningful today. Uh, do enjoy the lecture. Uh, we'll be dividing the lecture into four sections. Uh, first, the prologue, uh, which I will talk about the history and the chronology of the book project, followed by the uh, three main chapters. Okay, um, I begin with uh, the testimony received by Professor Dr. Marcel Velenga from Oxford Brookes University. Bajautopia is a must for anyone interested in the Bajau Laut, a collection of essays, photographs, drawings, and artwork that aims to reflect the, on the struggles and hopes of Southeast um, Asia sea nomads. It provides a long overdue and much needed overview of their life, culture, and history. It should be essential reading to anyone interested in this unique community. 
Um, another one is, uh, how can we embrace maritime mobility in Southeast Asia island today? What kinds of shelter and settlement can right the wrongs of the Bajar Laut's past marginalization and exclusion? How can we begin to envision a better future for them in a world of climate change, rising seawater levels and increasing precarity? By attempting to construct a utopian future for the Bajau Laut, Bajautopia imaginatively suggests pathways for their betterment while also challenging uh, land-based conception of the community. As quoted by Associate uh, Professor Dr. Jet Hui Chang from uh, NUS, these testimonies uh, this testimony have indeed uh, summarized uh, the book beautifully. Um, okay, the word Bajautopia comes from a combination of two words, uh, Bajau and Utopia, an imaginary society in an idealized visionary place. So this book aims to reflect on the struggles and hope of uh, the Sinomats, which provide a long overview and the much needed overview of their life, culture and history. So we were lucky that the collection of essays uh, were contributed by uh, foremost writers and scholars from different fields, not just architecture, but also history, film studies, anthropology, and also urban planning, um, who have uh, given a, a full support to produce this book. And also at the same time, there were also illustrations um, uh, by a, a number of architectural design proposals that we will be sharing tonight, which aim to stimulate um, ideas for the environmental and, and also social spatial transformation of this maritime community. So you will find in the book later, uh, uh, those who have purchased it, uh, that the design proposal cover an extensive range of projects from basic indigenous um, design, uh, giving a practical solution to an extreme futuristic or visionary architecture ideas. Okay, so before we go on into the details of the book content, I would like to share first how the book came to be. So in July 2020, the final year architecture degree program from UCSI University initiated a design research studio that focused on the uh, on Baja Laut. Um, and then the, this is our design manifesto, uh, Tales of Borneo unveiling the sea gypsies. Um, and then um, historically, the Bajau community is originated uh, from Sulu Archipelago and for generations they have been living between the sea and land. Even though they are separated into different nationalities due to the political border, but yet they remain uh, connected by sea myth, uh, rituals, cultural dances that carry beyond their ancestral homeland. Um, the importance of mobility for them enable to, them to accommodate um, fishery-based culture more freely. However, um, currently their nomadic lifestyle is constantly under threat due to uh, rapid industrial fishing and then uh, restriction in maritime borders, coastal and uh, sea pollution that constantly affects them. And so they, have to, they are being forced slowly to settle down permanently uh, and migrate on land. Um, and then we know that Sampurna for the past two decades have, been, have gained popularity as the gateway for, to world famous diving destinations. Uh, but one must not discount uh, that the Baja Laut as an integral part of the cultural landscape in Sampurna. So this is a common site if you visit uh, Sampurna. Um, okay, um, so, but then when they start to assimilate uh, and live on land, living on still houses, other issues start to evolve and, um, and, and threats them. So what inspired us to create this, this brief is because uh, we were interested, our unit was interested in the studies of indigenous culture heritage. And at the same time, um, during the, the period of this project, uh, there was also several news on fire outbreaks that ravages these temporary homes. So albeit living on water, the villagers have suffered um, from massive fire that destroy more than 100 homes at, at one time. So we can see that uh, even from this um, picture that the lack of adequate basic infrastructures, improper house plannings are, are devastating, um, are very devastating. And that could be perhaps one of the reasons uh, that contribute to the fire hazard. Uh, you can see the picture on the right. Um, so this is the remnants of the burnt homes and it was never rebuilt after this incident. And then the fire victims were relocated to temporary homes, uh, but they just live on timber sheds or plastic tents. And then the cycle continues worsening and, um, and, and not being uh, you know, solved. So uh, this project was done during the pandemic year. So it was the first time that we have to conduct a virtual design. Uh, so most of the communication interviews were done just remotely. Um, our project was exactly at Kampung Bangabangau, which is this, area, this building you can see in the Google map. This, 
so it is one of the water villages in Pekan Sempurna. And then you can see that they built still houses uh, there and there's also like a very um, like broken bridges. So when uh, the Bajau Laut community settled down, the Bajau are now considered as migrated people instead of the sea gypsies. So living on the on houseboat has been increasingly challenging for them and also economically unviable anymore. You can from this picture you can see the density and disorganized planning uh, forming a micro city of informal settlements. The community have no access to clean water and sanitation and are very vulnerable to diseases and also the sea water rises um, uh, give a threat to them. So the west side here on the left side is uh, the mangrove forest, uh, which are the, they commonly use the, the resources as the foundation of their building. Uh, it is also secluded uh, from the public jetty. And then the, the, on, on the north here is the main water intersection, the, the main waterway to get into Kampo Banga Bangau. Uh, and boat is the main uh, transportation if you want to enter this village. Um, and then the water village suffers from common infrastructure issues, uh, domestic waste pollution, and also poor water and sewerage system. So the highlighted area here, um, a very uh, fit, faded color, is basically a small island that is completely surrounded by water. This is where Sekolah Kebangsaan, Sekolah Kebangsaan Kampung Banga Bangau is located. And also there's a small uh, village burial ground or cemetery are located. Uh, due to the limited access of public space and land, uh, the local children uses um, this area as their playground. So you can see a common site where children just play on the cemetery, like nothing happened, like forgetting all the taboo, which is kind of interesting as well. Okay, one of the examples of Project One, where students created an imaginative cartography of Bono tales in the form of um, 3D model. Um, and then uh, this is talking about the, the, their, their vision of uh, Borneo short stories. So they collectively produce a, a mapping narrative, a research documentation, site analysis, site drawings, and some contextual studies as part of the Project One assignment. So even with um, limited resources and designing just based on virtual site, the students have conducted in-depth analysis of this issue. And then they compiled the report documentation, like in the picture here, to just highlight the main issues and establish like a research statement, finding their um, end users uh, based on the specific themes that they have selected, whether it's social, political, environmental, uh, fiction, heritage, culture, or community. So as part of the reading culture in Unit F, um, literature reviews uh, exercise helps to or force the students to develop um, reading habit and also critical thinking. Okay, so this is the illustration of the site. Um, this was done collectively among 52 students uh, and based on just Google Maps data, videos and photography. So it's literally um, because we are not able to visit the site. All right, so what inspired um, us to write and compile it? What motivates me and Cancun to publish this book? Um, is that, um, so our inspiration comes uh, from the Bajau children themselves, who have been misunderstood and discriminated for so long, facing long-standing traumas and are still being deprived of education to date. We feel that their story needs to be passed on and be heard of. Hopefully, with proper education, these children are able to change uh, the fate of their own people. So hopefully, one day when they grow up, they found this Bajautopia book and that is entirely dedicated in celebrating their cultural heritage, giving them a sense of belonging that we actually uh, listen to their um, endless plight. So um, this book is not a design catalog per se. It is meant to create a discourse and criticism for the betterment of uh, Bajau Laut. So even if you're not from architecture background, we just hope that this book is comprehensive enough to reach a wider audience, to foster empathy or give hope, especially towards the indigenous marginalized community, perhaps an essential, uh, essential reading to anyone interested in this unique community. So after the end of semester um, uh, in December 2020, um, we received positive feedbacks from reviewers, peers, local NGO. Plus we were fortunate enough to have a good batch of students who were able to produce interesting design proposal um, with very high quality artworks um, and drawings models that are worth uh, documenting. As you can see here in this photograph, this is uh, the, the picture of the Nexus graduation show. So the creation of this book was totally unplanned. 
Um, so when researching for this topic, we found out that it was also difficult for us to find a specific book on indigenous Bajau Laut uh, people. Therefore, we feel that there is an urgency that this publication could be one of the reference materials for future researchers. And then the, the deeper we dive in learning about the Bajau Laut's cultural anthropology, we started to uh, unfold the multifaceted issues and stories related to the Bajau Sinomats. And simultaneously, we are the one that are humbly learning from them too. So to us, uh, publishing the book is our form of a community service because if you want to make a change, you can also start writing. So this is the least that we can do. Um, and uh, university is a platform uh, beyond walls. We should collaborate more with academicians, stakeholders, NGOs, policymakers, or even activists to tap further with the community on ground and staying connected with them. Um, so this edited volume consists of three main chapters. So each section contains short essays on specific topics. Um, each section will feature creative architectural proposal from the architecture degree students. And uh, we outline the book structure early on uh, by organizing the essays and creative project in every chapter to be based on particular themes and ideologies. So we had a, a virtual book launch last year on 30th October 2021. And the book was finally published on 21st December 2021 as well. So just right before Christmas Eve. So we feel very humble uh, by the support given to us for this uh, non-profit of our publication. Right, so um, we will be moving on to our first chapter, which is the which is a reimagining nomadic lifestyle to be presented by Ken Kun. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Yep, all right, cool. Um, hi everyone. Um, yeah. Um, now it bring, you know, when, when I'm listening to Farah, it bring back a lot of memories to me. <laughs> like, you know, over one and a half year, um, started from the studio and, you know, go through the, the, the planning and preparing for the book project. Um, now, um, uh, good evening, everyone. And, and certainly, you know, the honors is ours today. Um, I mean, for, for tonight. Um, thank you, Master, for arranging. And it's totally our privilege to share the work um, with all of you, right? Now, um, just go uh, jump straight into the content. Um, as a book talk, we are just going to, if, if some of you have purchased the book, um, you may also, you know, have the book with you together, right? While we are, we are you know, like touring the book together with you. Um, right, so now I would like to start up with the, uh, this cultural mapping, yeah? Um, this is one of the favorite, uh, my favorite drawing um, that, that is, um, is the outcome from the studio. Now, um, in order to conceptualize um, or to contextualize yourself in the world of Bajautopia, I mean, in the world of Bajau, Bajau Lao, and in the context of Sampona, um, it's, it's very complex, right? Now, uh, it's complex in the sense that um, the whole geography of the place is go beyond um, between the land-based development on the town and, you know, further up into, you know, um, the wild ocean, right? Now, so this culture mapping is, is trying to capture some of the critical significant components uh, where we are, the project is really focusing on that. Now, on this map, um, you can see there's a, there's a building, you know, there's a cityscape, uh, which is the Samporna town, where the school, hospital, the commercial area, you will be fighting, you know, all these, all these, um, all these uh, activities, right? you know, commercial activities. Now, at the um, corner, you will find Bukit Tenggora. Yeah, Bukit Tenggora is another important, significant uh, place um, where it has a very rich archaeological value, which I'm not going to touch on it, but um, you guys can actually further, um, if you're interested, you can look into that as well. Uh, it's also part of the very important natural history of the place. Now, afterward, um, it's, it's very unique when you're looking at the geography as a landform, right? Because um, when you are stepping up from the land, you are start venturing into a lot of beautiful islands, right? Now, if you are very keen about um, school, um, you know, scuba diving, you know, about, you know, all the island, the, the beautiful, of course, you know, this, this place has been very famous for, for like international tourism, right? People go there, um, Sipadan, um, you know, all these places uh, for, for amazing um, um, diving activities. 
But uh, something we would like to highlight in the mapping is that you will see a lot of cultural activities um, is, is exit, you know, at the same time. So um, I'm not sure are you able to, to pinpoint, but I hope that you will see a lot of this component where you find um, the regatta lepa, which is um, the lepa lepa meaning the boat. Uh, that is a festival of, of uh, celebrating the, the boat culture, right? Um, then you will also find um, the, the activities of the, the bajau, right? They are catching fish, right? And you will see Kampung Bangau Mangau, which is, you know, um, the water village, right? And also up north, uh, that is also a, a, a small patch of uh, remaining mangrove um, in, the, in that. So by, by putting this, it's, it's trying to say that um, in terms of socially or ecologically, it's so complex, right? The, the place is so interesting and, and very complex, right? So that is where um, later on, we are going to show you a series of projects which each of them are so unique in the sense that they are tackling um, a different issue and method. So I would say, you know, over, over 50 of projects in our studio, none of them are repeating, you know, each of them are unique in the sense um, they are forming their own narrative, they are forming their own design brief um, uh, based on their, their research interests, right? Okay, now, um, so in chapter one, basically there are three main essays, uh, which is contributed by uh, Cynthia Cho, uh, Professor Cynthia Cho, um, if you are, you know, reading about um, Olang Lao, right? So she is like one of the profile um, scholar has been published a lot on, um, on, on, on this um, subject matter, right? Um, then we have also uh, Dr. Izit, right? Uh, which is currently based in UTM. Um, then we have, um, so this both chapter are interestingly because um, Cynthia is talking about both house, right? Uh, talking about the meaning the symbolic meaning um, about the house, right? So uh, for Cynthia, house um, doesn't mean it's just an object, it's just a, a living space. But for a lot of these indigenous people, there are more in-depth um, symbolism, right? Um, that, and, uh, that really come together in their, you know, the living compound, right? So we cannot see both house as just simply, you know, as instrument of living, but for her, um, she would argue that, you know, both how is like culturally, uh, religionally, um, and also, you know, uh, symbolically, there's a lot of meaning um, attaching to the, to the Bajau Lao people. Um, then you would have another typology, uh, which is looking at the home space and territory, which is the kind of um, uh, stilt how, right? Um, the, the wooden structure and um, the water village, right? Um, uh, so is it um, focusing on uh, teasing out all these um, interesting, you know, the spaces um, that how the arrangement of their living, um, you know, for their everyday life, right? Then um, Yusra, um, which is also one of the faculty members of, um, of UCSI University, um, she's interested about the, um, the tepo. Huh? Tepo meaning is a, is a craft of a wave, right? So it's a, it's a tika, which is a map, yeah. Um, so these are three um, interesting chapter trying to uh, introduce, right, the livelihood of Bajau Lao at, at the beginning. Um, so by introducing um, their living environment and also the object, yeah. Um, so now further on, I'm going to introduce, um, uh, just show you a very quick, um, amazing photo essay contributed by uh, Eric Abrahamson. Um, so Eric is, um, is based in Sweden, right? So um, he's basically a photographer, a writer, an anthropologist, um, I think she, um, he worked in Sampona. He lived there for several years um, for, for his research, but he's basically from Sweden. Um, so we are so privileged you know, um, that he would like to contribute um, all, the, all his, you know, the, the collection of, of amazing uh, images um, to, to, to this book. Now, these are some of the images that really show you um, the reality, right? The reality that people are living. Um, so, you know, with all the, all the kids, they are, they are born with the skill of, you know, like a natural diver. Um, they, they are amazing, you know, people that, that really have that emotional uh, attachment to the, to the ocean, right? And a lot of their, you know, their, their life also dependent on the marine resources, right? So basically, they are a small scale fisherman. They are just using, you know, um, this is what we call um, the skill that are catching the fish. So they are not using that kind of, you know, net, netting or any mechanism um, to catch a fish. So in a way, 
they are also very much protecting the environment. They just catch the amounts that they needed for life, right? So this is um, in a way that they are sustainable um, respect to the environment. Yeah, so after this uh, interesting photo essay, um, then we, uh, I'm just going, going to quickly show you. Um, yeah, this is um, uh, interesting, right? So we talk about the map, um, which is the tepo, yeah? Now for Bajau Lao people, um, the map is, is so meaningful. They, they, it serves for a multiple purposes in their life, right? So throughout this illustration, you will see uh, starting the day one, you know, when you're born, um, you have been, you know, um, living with the map, right? Where you, you're laying down, you know, on the map. Um, then uh, during the wedding, wedding, wedding festival, right? Um, you will also decorate your home with the tepo, right? Uh, then after that, um, you would have um, like, you know, as an as a everyday object, um, welcoming the guests, you know, sitting on the floor with the mat. And also even during the prayer, you were using the mat, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a place, right? And even um, at the end of the day, right, when it comes to the burial and the, the, the death, um, it's becoming something, a uh, preparation for the decreases, right? So it's very interesting, you know, you, you will see that material culture, um, of the tepo, um, which is, um, uh, next slide please, um, Sarah. Right. So this is dedicated for the woman, yeah. Now for tepo in Bajalao uh, community, it's basically um, produced by the woman, yeah. Um, so the woman uh, is the one that, um, you know, making, making the tepo, right. Um, so this is one of our student work, uh, trying to explore um, some of the waving techniques. Um, and, and the images on the left is, is kind of, um, that um, a, a dedicated, you know, um, uh, the roles of women, the important roles of women in, um, in, 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 you know, in the waving um, culture, right? In the, in the craft, the craft of um, this tempo. And this student also trying to, you know, um, uh, explore some technique, um, how to translate the, the waving technique into architectural design. Yeah. Now over here, I'm just quickly um, um, talk through um, two design for a chapter one, which I hope um, you know could could could, could spark some um, some discussion later on, right? So the first one is uh, Lim Chun Han, the moving bajau. Now Chun Han was I remember awarded our best unit student, right? Um, later on you can see his amazing drawing. Um, there are two components in his design because number one, uh, regarding the boat houses. Now we know CZC or the bajau they are living traditionally as a Sea nomad, right? But as Farah mentioned, um, now, now today is no longer financially viable for them to do so because there's a lot of limitation in terms of mobility. Uh, they will be, you know, because of the political um, of the national border. Um, because in, in previous, they, they were basically travel, um, you know, freely um, across the Sulu, Sulu Sea. Yeah? Sulu Sea meaning uh, within um, the Sabah Borneo and all the way north to um, Philippines. Yeah? Right, so um, uh, Chun Han is trying to imagining a, a modern, a contemporary types of um, uh, moving houses, right? Um, sorry, uh, the previous slide, um, but yeah. Yeah, so this is a typology that he he, he trying to reinvent um, the uh, modern boat houses, which is uh, could serve for more function, right? Rather than just as a living boat. So this, um, you know, like a mechanisms of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the moving house, is also serving as a platform um, to solve environment, environmental issue, right? So now, what, what I meant by environmental issue, uh, next slide. Okay, so, um, so you, you can see that this is, a, this is the area views of where the recycling center is situated. And uh, one of the uh, environment, environmental issue that, um, that very seriously happened is uh, about the ocean trust, yeah? Uh, the pollution, um, you know, that could easily found in the on the open water, right? Uh, so what uh, this project is trying to 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 saying that these houses is also um, is a collector, is a trust collector where allow the Bajau people, um, you know, living on the on on the ocean, but at the same time they are also solving the environmental um, problem. So next slide, yeah. So you will see this is the illustration where. Uh, this moving house trying to collect all the trusters, you know, the rubbish from the ocean and then bring back to this uh, recycling center. Next slide. Yeah, so over here, um, they will be sorting out, you know, uh, different types of this um, 
you know, the, the, the trusses and then um, trying to make some value out of it, right? So in return, uh, in Chunhan narrative, that should be something uh, to be exchanged, right? So say, for example, if I'm, I'm collecting, you know, a few kilos uh, of the trust, that in return, I should be getting some food, you know, or some money, you know, when, um, so this is a part of like, um, you know, a, a, a social responsibility, but it's also, it's a form of, um, of, of um, economic, um, you know, income for, to support the Bajau people. Uh, next, please. Right, so these are some of the images, um, you know, looking at how they could be, you know, the spaces are trying to, to, to cater a small boat, uh, which is, um, the, the Banga Banga people, they can also bring their, um, you know, the, the everyday um, waste come to the, the recycling center um, to, to do a certain, you know, uh, because one of the issues is that they don't have a proper uh, sanitation system and they also don't have a proper waste management, um, like rubbish collection, you know, don't, it doesn't exist. So one of the issues for Kampung Banga Banga is, is how to manage the, the waste. Yeah? So this is important infrastructure um, that trying to solve the issue, right? And also at the same time to bring um, economic return um, to the community, right? Um, yeah, next. Yeah, so Chunhan drawing is very minimalist, yeah? So it's, um, it, it's just a very simple tone, but, um, but I'm sure that you should, you should aware how much of the time and effort that, you know, you're trying to, to, to control the line weight, you know? Um, now, student, you, you might be interested, you know, in terms of the presentation technique, you know, the drawing scale. I think this, this could be one of the sample as your reference. So next, um, okay, now, uh, the other one would be uh, for Chun Hong. Now, I should uh, really address uh, a special thanks uh, for Chun Hong, because Chun Hong is almost um, as our assistant, um, you know, like a full-time assistant for this book project. Even though you know he has been now working as a as architecture assistant, but he's still very much um involving you know uh doing the work for us, right? So thanks, Chun Hong. So Chun Hong project is trying to uh, emphasize on traditionalism, right? Now we know Bajau Lao people; they are basically uh, animism, right? So they are um, they are they are their belief system are very much different from the mainstream, right? So they are they are practicing their own um uh, um you know. Uh, ritual, yeah, ritual, and also um, the kind of performance, right? Now, uh, traditionalism. Um, what Chun Hong trying to say is that tradition, traditionalism is something to to important um, to 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 really emphasize on their cultural heritage, right? Without this ritual and the traditional practices, uh, we that there's no bajalau. Yeah, simply say, right? Meaning to say, we we need to preserve the bajalau. At the same time, we, we also need to preserve their, their cultural system, right? Their belief system. So this is important. Now, uh, this, this uh, next slide. Um, so this project is looking at a tree tower, right? So it's, um, it's basically a big um, living boat, um, but each of these boats are serving for uh, different purposes, right? So um, there are three. Uh, number one is for a uh, boat for ritual, right? So it's basically serving as a, as a cultural center. Or the heritage center uh, for for the for the Bajalao people to perform their their ritual. And the second tower is what we call uh, the birth tower. Now we know miscarriage um, is one of the um, another issue for the woman, the Bajau woman, because um, due to their inaccessibility to the hospital and 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 other factor, um, they have a high chance of miscarriage in 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 as a as a woman, right? So this birth tower trying to um, enhance the facilities uh, by providing a, a, a water bed, a water birth uh, facility to the to the to the woman, right? So it's also like a woman center, yeah, a community center for the woman. Um, so number three is um, the death tower. So death tower is interesting in a way that how it come to the end of the life. Um, so um, Chun, uh, Chun Hong suggested that. Um, uh, that, that all the burial, uh, the process should be back to the ocean, right? So it, 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 it formed, um, uh, you know, into the, into the form of coral and then uh, give, the, give the, I mean, the death back to the, to the ocean, right? Next, next slide. Okay, now these are some of the sketches, uh, which is interesting. Uh, during the design process, he's trying to explore a different uh, floating structure, um, you know, trying to learn from um, um, the, the boat, uh, design right um, structurally 
Now, uh, next, yeah, so this is uh, the final drawing outcome, which is very, you know, traditional in the sense that um, uh, there is a lot of interesting uh, spaces inside. And you can see all the fin is actually um, like a fabric fin um, to reduce the dependence for, for, for like elasticity or the machine. So this structure, um, you know, um, theoretically can be actually functioned uh, by using the wind um, energy, right? Without um, really depending on the on the other resources, right? So these are some um, these are these are the images. Now, yeah, um, I basically done for chapter one. So now maybe Farah, you can continue with chapter okay. two. All right, thank you, Inquin. Um, okay, um, chapter two, reenacting um, Hosanna. Okay, chapter two, um, reenacting the right to the ocean. So in this chapter, uh, we discuss um, the social, the political, and also environmental challenges faced by the sea nomads, while at the same time uh, providing visionary and futuristic ideas for their future development. So under this chapter, we have um, Dr. Sanon Marshall, uh, which wrote an essay on the social and political challenges facing uh, the Bajau Laut. And we have also Irwan Junaidi, who is a film director and producer. Uh, that I wrote an article on visionary ideas for the future and myself on uh, anthropogenic mar marine scape. So, um, okay, so, so this is uh, basically the one of uh, the student works as well, uh, which is a group work. Uh, we can know that uh, many of the Baja Laut have never belonged to any modern state. So their fishing grounds overlap within the territories of Malaysia, Philippines, and also Indonesia. So the crisscrossing between these territories are very common and normal to them. Uh, but yet they remain connected, even though they are like um, maybe a distance apart, they are connected by the sea myth, uh, rituals, cultural dances that carry beyond their ancestral homeland. Um, as mentioned earlier uh, by Kenkun in the chapter number one. So the, the, the ocean and the vast ocean remains the place for the Bajau Laut to uh, cultural roots, uh, sacred home, and also uh, their sense of self. So ocean is something that's very connected to them. So living a nomadic lifestyle means that uh, lepa or boat houses is uh, already their second homes. So Bajau Laut um, existence is a representation of democracy, one which emphasizes the protection of their maritime sovereignty and also the continuity of their spiritual nomadic living tradition, as mentioned by Dr. Sanon. So we can see the title free, but also exploited, um, uh, something similar to uh, what was written uh, earlier, but has been explained further by Dr. Sanon, is that uh, roaming between the territories is no more a luxury because uh, boat maintenance is rather an expensive one, and then they can't just cut trees uh, from the forest like old days. Uh, so the timber supplies becomes more very expensive to them. And also to get their food, uh, they, they have to dive uh, and fish themselves, uh, but also uh, they are aware of the economic uh, reality as they can't, um, they, the industry product that cannot be har harvested industrially, um, such as uh, maybe mantis shrimps and sea cucumber, it will be done by the Bajalot people. But they are also being underpaid, uh, struggling on dying ocean. Uh, while other enjoy their food in top end restaurants, so it's like that's what uh, the, the the economic crisis that they are facing, and also they suffer severe deprivation through the lack of access, access to work, uh, to free movement, uh, to education, and also health. So only a few were lucky enough to be assisted or helped by the NGOs and well-meaning individuals. Okay, uh, so I'll be explaining a bit on um, uh, the project. Um, so, and on our final project three, uh, the brief was talking about adaptive architecture, which can be number one, talking about responsive and uh, resilient architecture towards the environment or socially adaptable design that caters the community needs and lifestyle customs or tradition. Or three, maybe uh, adaptive architecture, which means uh, it's transformable, it's movable, and also it can suit the surrounding sea-based context, or perhaps a flexible design that continuously adapts its spatial planning just like the traditional Baja housing. So one of our students, um, Jared Yap, uh, talks about, uh, interpret uh, that adaptive and resilient is through the creation of an autonomous city. So instead of solving issues of statelessness through the provision of citizenship, 
So this project uh, suggests an alternative route to allow stateless Bajau people to be free from restriction of the Sabah government to create their own micro city and bring their unique identity and traditions with them. So as seafarers living in a maritime fishing society um, help to develop their great skills in traditional boat making technique, especially in the old days. Um, so this is basically just uh, a drawing that resembles how uh, the, the perhaps the creation of a micro city is through a small assemb assembly of, of mini boats. And then, um, so the common area provided to enhance relationship, the left is a common area provided to enhance the relationship between individuals, especially the women uh, that they, have, they tend to gather around through um, uh, while cooking or dining. And also in the right picture is the mangrove uh, nursery or the seaweed uh, farming for, to, to have its sustainable economy. So the green uh, pocket space is also important to serve as a gathering spot. Okay, so during um, the Regatta Lepa Festival, an event that pays homage to the traditional sailing boat of the Bajau Sampurna. So normally, at this kind of uh, Regatta Lepa Festival, which happens annually, uh, the Bajau Lok people will perform Igal Igal dance ritual as part of their cultural performance and so singing and dancing in Bajau language as well. So this is great, creating like, um, so his idea was actually to uh, repurpose uh, 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 an abandoned uh, ship into creating uh, its own um, independent boot for the Bajau. Okay, so the design uh, uniquely integrates architecture and also maritime architecture, such as the vessel, uh, bringing together the Bajau seafarers community into a huge uh, nomadism concept rather than resist uh, why not embrace their own um, roots? So the architecture proposal celebrates uh, the local community and their maritime heritage and at the same time become uh, more resilient in facing uh, climate change. So Jared project is, is, uh, is uh, one um, best uh, design for that, uh, in that, for that year, for the semester. And also he participated in several uh, uh, competitions such as the Blue Scope. Uh, competition and also Asian Young Designer and also won a project for a uh, one award for this project. So <clears throat> then I move on to uh, another a part of the chapter two, which talks about uh, Anthropocene Ocean. Um, so this is uh, part of the group work. So ocean is a is a natural heritage. It's a, because of the natural culture and 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 maritime heritage value. So what is very uh, important, essential. So this group work model represents um, the conceptual cross section of a coastline showing the rise of seawater, which affects the Bajau silt houses that are flooded with domestic and also industrial uh, pollutions and other uh, climate change impacts. Okay, um, waste. Waste uh, is one of the unfortunate byproducts of modern technology and is being tackled by uh, this student, uh, Wong Jen Chun, with a project titled The Revival of, of Oceantopia. So the Trash Utopia project aims to integrate um, education with a waste recycling center in the middle of the water intersection at Kampung Banga Bangau. Uh, the recycling center on the ground floor is where the local community can collect, segregate and process household waste um, in, in, uh, that, that they collect in their neighborhood. So the open concept workstation and atrium hall, you can see here, um, on the upper floors are used for congregation and other community events as well. So but this building uses, uh, uses local materials such as recycling uh, materials, timber and bamboo, uh, since the Baja people are also skilled wood, woods craftsmen. So um, one of the strengths of Wong Jianchun is that, uh, which you can see more of his work in the book, uh, is is he has a very good um, an expressive drawing that shows um, the idea of his um, the, the, to match the concept of the environmental waste so which is uh, very interestingly shown here okay um so um this picture here is the snippet of essay written by our guest writer irwan who is a founder of um, the co-founder of the r d production studio so the Baja Laut are highly, highly adaptable to any future challenges as they adapt and work closely with the surrounding environment to survive. So apparently Baja Laut has its own unique traits um, because they went through uh, physiology and genetic mutation. So scientific research shows that Baja Laut people possess a genetic trait to hold their breath underwater for a long time. 
um, because of their larger spleen size and their body genetic has adapted to sea life, making them natural divers, which is important uh, as fishermen for them to survive uh, their livelihood as well. Okay, another interesting project is uh, under the Anthropocene uh, that responded to the Anthropocene Ocean team is by Tan Ning Jin. Uh, the wall, a defensive architecture. So this project talks about the global increase in flood frequency, especially in development near the coastal area. So um, you can write, uh, you can see that the, the, uh, what he wrote, a fortified city, a defensive structure, a wall that is high enough to stop the water from flooding, a wall that is continuous like the Great Wall of China. So the wall is a proposal to counter the inevitable sea level rise and to preserve the island. So the wall uh, will be built by the Baja people, strengthening their collective solidarity and forging their identity. So in the long run, uh, this project aims to create like a new architecture typology, um, and then which comes with a defensive system to counter the ocean's current and harvest its energy through vibration. So creating an endless cycle of sustainable energy for the people. So um, climate change um, causing harsh coastal erosion uh, affects the site directly. So sometimes uh, these constant storm surges and tides keep damaging their homes and also pushing all the do domestic waste to further pollute the shore. So this is one of the uh, model uh, and also collage uh, done by the student. And also the picture on the right is basically his uh, future vision, like in, in, which takes like decades uh, to build that kind of wall to protect the Baja people from, um, you know, uh, from facing climate change. So while building the wall, the Baja people will slowly also grow their city and move toward a more sustainable uh, living uh, by having agriculture and also industry. Um, and then there's a sense of humanity within this visual proposal because uh, they tackles on the social and environmental issues that address, that benefit the community directly. Okay, then um, the, the next chapter. All right, cool. Um, okay, we are 10 minutes, nine. <laughs> okay, right. Um, now, quickly on chapter three, um, rethinking Sabah and Dibaja Laut. Reflect on issues um, across children's welfare, education, tourism, sustainability uh, by reclaiming or empowering the sovereignty of Dibaja Laut. And the chapter begins with, um, now it, it wasn't shown in the slide here, but um, if you read the book, it started with um, an essay contributed by the NGO, uh, Borneo Comrade, uh, which is a true story. Now, I don't want to reveal the storyline here to you. I wish you um, could have a copy and then read the story. It's so touching. Um, after reading that short essay, I think immediately you get the emotion. Um, you are certainly understand what the, what the kids, you know, um, especially um, the woman, right? Um, the girl, um, what are the such an awkward, um, you know, situation or a certain stereotype, um, 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 you know, that, that they cannot get, get, get rid of it, right? Um, so Borneo Comrade, uh, which is um, the NGO that we are collaborated, they offer a free education um, to the stateless kids um, at Sempona, right? Um, so um, as, you know, Farah mentioned in the beginning, we are doing this as a non-profit um, publication. So all the profit will be um, served as a donation um, to Bonin Comrade, right? So now after the essay um, talking about um, the children, um, especially the girl um, in Sampona, then we have another essay um, contributed by uh, Dr. Tini. So Dr. Tini is, um, is a lecturer, is a an uh, assistant professor now based in UMS, and he, she has been uh, working on a project um, like a community-driven um, tourism uh, based in Sampona, right? So um, that essay also captured a lot of ideas and reflection on, um, you know, the tourism community currently happening in Sabah because we know a lot of these tourism are dominated, um, you know, by the kind of company, um, the, the, or the, the, the travel agency, uh, which they are really making money by, you know, offering the activity of diving, um, you know, um, and, and a lot of this stuff. But the argument was um, the Baja Laut are the, are the, you know, are basically the, the, the character that people 
went there, you know, and 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 go and visit uh, the community. But um, ironically, they don't even get, you know, a, a benefit from this tourism, right? Um, from this really um, a, a profit making uh, industrial. Um, so this is is a time for us to reflect on what could be um, allowed the community themselves to be the person who lead the the industry, right? To empower their skill and management um, to be part of the the the, the tourism, right? Um, so that is is something um, you know um, uh, interesting to think think along. Um, then um, another um, the final essay, which is we have you know a privilege again invite um, our professor, Professor Sajudin, um, to wrote um, an essay about education and democracy. So um, the issue of democratic and uh, education, um, I mean, how to promote um, a social inclusion in our society, especially, um, I think we are, is, is, a, is an important issue to address, right? Because, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's something, you know, when, when the first time we, uh, um, taken this, this project, I'm sure a lot of us, um, we don't even recognize the existence of Baja Laut, you know, that's why they have been living, you know, in the region for a century, right, a several century. But um, today, they are still very much um, um, behind, you know, we, we can't even read their story or any information, you know, from our, from our textbook, from our mainstream, um, you know, education material. Um, so they have been really left over, uh, left, you know, behind. From our education um, uh, or our, our society at all, right? So Professor Tajudin is is reflect on how should we to be more inclusive, uh, socially inclusive, um, to be you know as a you know one Malaysia or you know um, that Malaysia for all, which is um, that is a notion, right? Then um, over here I would like to um, uh, showcase um, uh, quickly on three projects. So um, first project is um, contributed by Dennis. Um, this is interesting. So that illustration on the left, you see, is actually a, a, a card, yeah, a, a game, a, a, a card game. Um, so she tried to imagine a different character of Baja Laut, um, you know, as a as the kind of uh, Aquaman, you know, character, or there is a certain uh, um, uh, eels, you know, um, that then is how to play the game uh, within the. Uh, yeah, a certain he, she set a certain interesting, you know, um, like you know, a game, a, a game rules, um, that how to empower, um, yeah, the identity, right? So they have certain super superpower, yeah. So that that's sort of interesting. So this basically was our first project where we allowed the student to explore idea, uh, while a uh, different uh representation, right? It doesn't necessarily architectural, um, uh, as a building, but they can inventing a lot of interesting idea um, through a different, you know, um, um, the technique. Um, so this project called Wallace City, um, next um, slide. So this um, is basically a tourism center. It's a tourism center that um, running to be, to, be, um, to be operated by um, the community. And it's actually uh, very much uh, located, um, you know, in, in, Bagama, uh, in Kampo Bagamaga. And the, the, uh, the, the planning, is trying to use the kind of uh, uh, prefabricated and a modular system where um, the architecture are very flexible, um, are movable, they are adaptable for any like a new function over time, right? So it's, it's not something rigid and, um, and permanent. So this is more like impermanent, impermanent architecture. And it's trying to um, uh, bring in a lot of activities, um, uh, trying to merge, you know, separate, to, to celebrate the culture um, with the community, right? So the next slide, right? So this is, um, you know, all the, the perspective and illustration um, to really trying to, you know, in terms of the architectural language, it's also very much uh, responsive toward um, the water village, right? So it's, it's more um, the kind of flexible and, and it's a, a, a wallless, right? So there's, there's no wall, uh, but there's a lot of um, uh, structure that is adaptable for various kinds of activities, right? Yep, so that this is one project. And the second one um, is by Jian, right? Now we know um, the boat culture is diving, uh, is dying, um, but again, um, um, Jian uh, argued that 
in order to protect the cultural identity and the 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 the, the heritage, we have to bring back um the the lepa, right? So because boat boat house and the boat culture is so much significant to the community. Um, and today, um, you can't even find you know the people um or the or the traditional boat maker uh, and the industrial is is basically you know um no longer exist. But this project is trying to bring back um the 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 boat making tradition into um you know into the into that that time. Um, next please. Right. So this is um this is a a, a big scale, right? But um of course uh what Tian trying to say that um you have to in 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 order to be make this uh boat making like you know a factory not not a factory but you know it's it's basically a boat making center um is important for tourism and also to support a lot of skill learning right so you you cannot um to to make the industrial like a boat for one or two family but if you empower and you upscale um the boat making industry into a into a you know into the into the culture so um they can actually bring a profit and also bring attraction to the place you know a, a new experience to the to the tourists right next please Right, so this is a section showing um a lot of you know like the activities, the boat making activities, and also some um some visitor spaces um and and how the mechanism um is also incorporated into um the building as a whole. Right. Yeah. So this is um a, a project on boat making and also uh, to bring back the culture of boat um into the society. So last one um is by Yi Chen. Right. Now Yi Chen is um looking at trade. Now we know uh, fishing has been something um, no longer, you know, like naturally easy for, for the people because there is a certain um, regulation and also that is because um, the, the um, you know, that kind of last skills um, um, uh, fishing because yeah, basically, you know, um, the, the fish is, is no longer that, that, that many. Um, so the, the, the environment is also very much polluted. So this is um, the project trying to empower the fish trade because what happened now, all the budget people, they are not, you know, good at all in number and doing the business. So, um, so normally the meter band um, or, you know, from the, from, the, from, the, from the owner from the restaurant will buy the fishes or any, you know, um, the, the marine um, um, collection uh, from the budget people, right? So a lot of times they have been exploited by the meter band. Right. So Yi Chen trying to say that why not, you know, let the Bajau people to be in the business, right? So they can get the profit um, without exploited by the meter, meter band, right? In, in, in that sense. Um, so this project, uh, next slide. So this project is looking, uh, so this is a, a, um, a project on illustration on license, right? Now we know, um, interestingly, license has been something to represent legalization of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a certain thing, right? So be a, be a fisherman or be anyone, you need a license to do something. But this is um, something like ironically um, to, to reflect where the license is, is going to empower the, um, you know, to ensure the, um, the justice and also the opportunity, the equal opportunity to the community. So over here, you can see, um, you know, all the seafood um, or how, they are, they are, they are, they are selling, you know, all the, all the, all the commercial activities, uh, the, and the, um, the commerce, right. And setting up the, 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 the store, the fish market has to be like all come into, you know, to be legalized, right. Meaning like, um, to give equal opportunity back to the, uh, budget people. Right. So next, um, yeah. So these are some of the images showing, um, the kind of imagination of the fish market, right. So it's, it's, it's a combination of, um, again, as a tourism uh, attraction space, but also as a as a um, like a jetty, right? A jetty for uh, for loading and unloading uh, the catches, and and it's also like very flexible um, um, structure to be adaptable. Uh, next, right? Then over here you will see, you know, how all the women, um, all the people, um, uh, you know, all the selling and buying activities are happening, you know, very casually. And by all, you know, themselves, um, with where the budget people um could 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 benefit uh, the most, right? From from this uh, you know, fishing activities. 
Right now, um, yeah, basically that is all we are we have been uh, putting together for tonight. And to end this presentation, I mean the sharing. Um, this is a poem from that written by Bonnie Comrade, and I would like to read this as something to end our presentation. C is life from knowledge to sustenance. Human divide with border, but the Bajalao embrace the sea as their universe. Gassi and smart with incomparable wisdom of the sea, dive like a fish, the unique human being, the guardian of the sea. Right. So I think um, today's sharing is really a dedication um, to the Bajalao. And um, this is really our humble contribution. We never, you know, me and Farah, we never thought that. We are so privileged to embark into this book project and to, to really uh, be part of, you know, um, of, of this, of this uh, topic. Um, so this book is really a dedication uh, back to the community. Um, so last slide, we would like to just get this a bit of promotion. Um, so this is um, the link, link tree uh, where you can actually buy direct from us um, to support our uh, fundraising project. Yeah, because ultimately, we are, we are selling at a mouse of book and to connect, to collect the donation um, to, and, and that will go to Borneo Comrade to support their free education to the statelet kit um, in Sampona, right? So with that, um, I end this sharing. All right, thank you so much. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you so much, um, Dr. Ken Kun and Architect Farah for the very awesome sharing. I hope everyone enjoyed it and gained a lot of um, information and insights into this, uh, the, the people of Sea Nomads and the Bajau people. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. Actually, I've, I've just talked to one of the Bajau people, even the culture, um, uh, for example, when they're marrying, they actually meet their boats together as a as a symbol of their the tradition or um, the uh, secretary of the the um, marriage. Oh, yeah. really? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone mentioned to me. I'm like, wow, that's um, that's very interesting, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll be having a Q and A session now. Um. I think we have um a few questions from the um from the audience. Uh. First question is from uh architect Ian Eng. Um. What were the Bajau people's response to these uh, student proposals? Uh, maybe uh, both of you can take take turns in 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 um, uh, answering this. This. Um, okay. Uh, let me yeah, try. you can uh, go first. Hi, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, and I I know Ian. Hi, I get that Ian. Thanks, thanks, thanks for joining, uh, supporting. Um, now this is definitely um you know, an important question. Now we have been thinking uh, before you know right after we completed the project, we always wanted to to bring the project and bring the student. To the site, right, um, and then um, arrange a, a exhibition or you know a, a, a talk and you know any you know a, a, a community service um, to the people. Now, however, this is these are all still in our planning, uh, <laughs> and we are we are not able. I mean, it's like when when the project completed in twenty twenty, right? Um, so this has been something we wish to we we could go go you know in person to the to the place and um, to have the interaction, direct interaction with the community, right? So this is really something pending um, to, be, to be really carried out um, in near future. Um, so we, we hope that this project doesn't just end here, right? Um, doesn't just end with the book, but we are, now I myself, I'm, I'm working on another continuing uh, project um, to, in, in this place. Um, so I shall update everyone when, when there's, there's more news. Um, yeah, so it's in, important. I think um, Ian trying, in, in, in question is that um, this book ultimately um, is important as you know something uh, as um, as a, to, 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 to increase a public awareness right um, on this very unique community but in also important um, to have a dialogue um, with the community right how do they reflect or how do they think about this proposal um, could possibly um, you know implement it Right. Um, yeah. This is this is definitely we we are we are very keen uh, to do. But um, yeah, it's it's going to be something planned for the future. Mm. Um, I hope I answer yeah. your question. Just to add on, uh, yeah. hi, Akita Ian. Uh, so these are actually undergrad undergraduate uh, 
students, third year, so they are final year students, uh, this, which means a combination of um, semester five and semester six students doing this project. Um, uh, yes, uh, yes, we haven't really, uh, but we were just able to show a few um, projects to um, the Bruno Comrade team. And also we have, uh, when we did the, pro 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 the exhibition, uh, sorry, not exhibition, the crit, we invited uh, someone from um, Sabah, people from Sabah, University of Malaysia Sabah, or just uh, artists from Sabah to sort of like review the students' work. So, um, but I think um, there are some uh, positive comments as well, especially the ones that did, um, when it comes to their cultural heritage, such as uh, weaving, um, how the the, uh, the the heritage of um, the weaving and empowering women, the empowering Baja women, and then uh, change into an architecture, how we apply the weaving technique into the building facade and things like that, that, did, that had a good response um, from the, the, the locals there. So, um, but yeah, I, I wish we could have, um, uh, how to say, I uh, wish we could have more dialogue with the people and how they would respond uh, directly to our um, proposals. Awesome. Um, I hope that uh, answers your question, uh, Kitaki. Um, um, if there's any more questions, please uh, put them in the chat so we can bring it up. Um, meanwhile, I have a question um, for both of you. Um, uh, what actually sparked like the initial spark uh, for you to, to venture in this um, research or this uh, book or anything about like Bajau people and the community? I think, um, like, like I mentioned earlier in the slides, um, uh, we, we were looking um, towards cultural heritage and um, we, we wanted to do something related to indigenous but more unique. So we like the idea of how do you say? Because this is a because this is a marginalized community, and and the topic yeah. of bajau is not famous. It's not something that is commonly talked about, commonly debated about. So we were um, sort of like I, I'm not so sure how it sparked, but it was more like um, like a series of events, like I mentioned, like the news, and then there's also local NGO that promoted talking about Sabah, which touched me because she said that uh, when it comes to the people, uh, our own people, we don't really. Yeah. participate and help as quick as when it comes to perhaps the international issues you know mm -hmm. so that sort of like uh, drive us to slowly uh, develop the brief and then only uh, subsequently the, the book project so it's, it's more like a, um, because I think both of us have never really been to Sabah I'm not so sure about that right we wanted we, really, we were really excited to plan we've already contacted plan things like that but it was uh, during MCO so so we, we as, like I said, I mentioned earlier, we definitely am not an expert in this topic. There is so much that I learned uh, while teaching and also while writing the book, uh, while compiling the book, as et etc. So uh, just a tip of the ice iceberg. Whether, um, yeah, what, how how does this book really benefit the Baja people? I'm not so sure because the the it's like we have produced uh, on our side, we have done something. So the impact or what we can see whether the thing, this thing will grow is very fluid. Um, but uh, just we just want to highlight on the issue of um, education establishment or how institution can contribute directly to the people through this kind of uh, book project huh? and also yeah community engagement. I see. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, um, I have to admit I'm I'm myself I'm a Sabahan and I uh, there's a lot of culture in 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 um, in, in Sabah and uh, when I when I saw this book I'm like wow um, I, I really learned a lot about. Uh, Bajau people as well from this group. Um, yeah. Um, uh, any more questions before we um, end this session? Please type in in the <laughs> in the comment section. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, maybe I have another another question for you too. Um, what are your hopes for the Bajau community after um, you have published these books? What um, what are your hopes on maybe the uh, the government or the the, the people that um, is in context to the Bajau people like yeah for the Bajau people I guess sorry I still a hard question <laughs> <laughs> no 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 go on, go on, go on. Good, good good question um, okay. now again um, we, we really humbly think that this is um, just a small step, um, you know, 
to what um 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 now how, how to put it like um now of course if you ask me what i hope you know can draw out from this book project um definitely i wish you know we can uh bring a certain uh debate right and and attention uh, especially you know perhaps from other ngo from the government of course um that could put for looking at the issue now um all the all the issue you know that we are we mentioning you know by the by the by the writer in this book is no longer new right um the issue on citizenship the issue on welfare um, now this has been for i would say you know since i i i, I couldn't how to how to calculate the time but it has been like a long standing um non that, that without no solution right um, um into into this 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 thing um so uh, as as how we are putting um, even you know the book the book title right utopia right now utopia is, is a word that that are uh, imagining the future right imagining the future um so this um this is something we are trying to highlight there are so much potential there are so much possibility um within the community right so if we are paying attention we develop uh we empower you know um them there 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 are many many possibility not restricted to the proposal in this book right so there are a lot more um something you know all of us you know regardless you are the individual you are the government you are you know a corporate everyone could 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 give you know just our whatever that we could we could contribute to the to the community um so that is one now uh number two um uh that is for me i it doesn't mean uh, for para but but personally i hope that um this book project um could actually uplift architecture to become a discourse right now when because my wife uh, was actually an accountant um like a costing executive um you know she never ever understand architecture she, she don't read architecture you know all those you know i'm 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 interested in, in architecture. Now, when um um she read, you know, she she read the whole book word by word, um, you know, um uh, to support. I mean, you know, um to that. So um so when I asked her, what what is the opinion? You know, what what did you learn as a you know as a as a popular reading? Um, you know, as a as someone totally out of architecture, um, you know, to read this this book. Now, um, I I feel privileged and and happy to to hear that. Um. Now I heard she thought you know um this book when reading the architecture proposal uh is somehow very difficult for 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 her to understand <laughs> now I we I I I catch the meaning you know because um some of these are are uh are very narrative yeah it, it's a more imagination right so as a as a someone you know as a lay, you know without any background from architecture um this could be something um um you know difficult but but interestingly um she she mentioned that after a few article right after a few proposal um she she kind of you know get 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 used to you know how to how to read it right so with a certain imagination um as a proposal right um now so i i'm, I'm very happy that this book at least you know for my, for my wife as someone you know without architectural background and then um she learned something she learned something um about this community this unique community um and and so now so i hope that everyone you know um regardless your your background your professional um when you pick up the book um is is give the community an opportunity um to understand them right um now i am sure that this is not the most comprehensive book about bajau um community right um we we never claim that this is right you know this is like a a a a, a as comprehensive as enough but no right so this is just um as our you know really a humble contribution by putting um the essay and the architectural proposal together now um my second my second um hope um trying to 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 say is that um architecture because as we know is always um um seen as a as a professional as a professional practice by the society right um so if you are saying that you are you as an architect uh, right people know that you are a professional you are you know building stuff um now 
so so something that I also hope to 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 bring out from this book is that we are no longer seeing architecture just you know equal to professional practice, but architecture is also equal to you know a public discourse, uh, equal to uh, you know a debate, right or or ideas that we could also have a dialogue with the society, right? So we are no longer serving, you know, just to our professional uh, practices, but it's more towards um, having another form of dialogue with the society, right? Um, so that is also, I, I don't think I, I achieved, I, I don't think this book has, has achieved that, that, but this is something I wish, you know, um, there's a lot more, uh, you know, like all of you, you know, the future architect or the future, future architecture researcher um, could be also, um, embrace um, this kind of ideas where we are using architecture as a tool, um, you know, to, to, to promote a discourse um, to our society, right? Yep. Great. Um, Clifford, would you like to say a few words <laughs> or? Is, is, uh, was it was the question or just to uh, summarize or what? The, the, the hope um, up for the, um, after you publish this book? Mm. Um, yeah, to make a great impact on the community, I think definitely it's something that needs to be done in long term. Um, because what we're doing just now, it's just a, you know, just a publishing a book. It's just something that you read. It's not really an application yet. Um, um, initially, we had the idea on how to make this like a, like a sequence of project. How, what's next after the book? There were some plans about it, but it was... Um, we we're still in the process, we we're still uh, thinking about it. So, but then what I hope is just um, um, just to foster some, um, em what I aim, this book could foster empathy and hope um, for the pe Bajau people and also for outsiders who have, mm, who have no idea what uh, Bajau people are or never been there to really read. So just uh, to open up a window for us to have a more um, empathy towards them, towards this marginalized community. That's all I think. Okay. Oh, okay. Amazing. Um, uh, there's one question from Facebook. I think this oh. will be our last question. Um, the question is, uh, can you share a few limitations that you have um, experienced throughout the process? Process of? Um, of um, researching and um, on this book. No, there are, are many limitations. limitations. <laughs> there are many limitations. Many, many, sure. we, <laughs> too many, yeah. too many limitations. <laughs> uh, maybe the, the one of the, the most challenging limitation, I guess. Maybe you can share on that. Maybe just one, I guess. Okay, Farah. Because mm, there's um, too many. <laughs> the, the limitation in the in the book process, is it? Public publishing the book, right? Is it? Yeah, in probably in mm. like getting. I mean, personally, la, I, I, for me, for myself, I feel that um, the, the first limitation is definitely uh, when we were doing this project, we were not able to travel. I think uh, as someone who really believe in site visit and, and be, you know, communicate directly with the people, I find that's the first uh, hiccups that we face. Um, so there's a lot of uh, interpretation, and uh, but then we were lucky. Uh, Bono Comrade, uh, our NGO, has helped us a lot to give um, the information uh, and insight, which uh, keeps us keep keep us moving. And then uh, when we set up the project, uh, uh, we decided to do the book as well. I think we were. Um, um, yeah, we have the materials ready, but we were also sourcing for uh, printing and publishing. Um, so we. So there were some, how to say, uh, challenges as well during that time, like, can we make it? Uh, we were like contemplating, contemplating on it as well because it's, it's, it wasn't easy. It looks easy, but it wasn't. Um, so after that, like um, after a series of events, and then we, uh, we were lucky enough uh, that Gerak Budaya um, accepted our proposal, our book proposal, and um, they agreed to publish the book. And that was uh, definitely gave us a hope that, oh, wow, this is really, it's going to happen. So, and then um, uh, on top of that, we, we were also grateful to be supported by uh, the guest writer who have been kind enough to just share knowledge with us. 
Um, so that slowly um, falls into place. Uh, so every hiccups or every challenges, there's definitely the, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So, but then um, I'm glad that we keep on pushing ourselves uh, with the right help uh, to, to complete this. Yeah. That's from me. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, there is one more question from, mm -hmm. uh, would you like to add on, uh, Dr. Ken Hing? Uh, there, there's one more question from architect Ian. Uh, how did the students take to your premise that architecture is only a means of access into a debate? Uh, do they buy into that? Um, I think you can read it through the chat box as well, if you want to. Mm -hmm. Only a means of access into a debate. Um, can, can you elaborate the question a bit? Yeah, um, uh, Ken Kun just mentioned that uh, architecture isn't just about building buildings, designing buildings, but it's actually bringing people into, you know, the, the larger social debates in life, uh, you know, about uh, uh, fairness, uh, justice, existence, and sustainability, and all the rest of it. Um, it it's, um, it's a kind of slightly high level way of doing education, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, I'm just wondering whether um, this, this, this kind of interpretation of the works of a student only came to you uh, when you wanted to pu publish this book and you, you needed a thesis, or you actually designed your undergraduate uh, sort of a, a studio briefs uh, to say, hey, look, we're going to look into a, you know, a social issue. Uh, how, how did you play this thing? Um, okay, maybe I can start first. Um, uh, definitely, I think um, um, part of the brief, um, yeah, we really pushed the boundary into uh, not just thinking architecture as a building. So early on, in the, um, during the brief also, we normally, in our unit, we normally set up certain teams uh, for them to sort of like uh, choose whether they are going to tackle on the issue of environmental, whether they're going to tackle the issue of uh, culture and social, whether they're going to, uh, you know, uh, do something related to um, and heritage. So um, they have to dig in deep, very deep into uh, this kind of uh, crisis and questioning what uh, the injustice and things like that. And I think um, it really opens up. I, 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 we feel that one of the feedback of our, from our students is that they, they also learn all this kind of um, crisis or, or the issue behind architecture. Like, you know, sometimes a building, there's always a, a restriction or um, uh, from it to happen. So um, the students, I, I felt that um, the brief and also the design proposals um, you have to take consideration into uh, any um, social uh, or, or environmental issues so that it becomes more wholesome. You don't think uh, the architecture just as a building, but you also think about the environment. So um, that's maybe, uh, and then what, what, you, what we share here is really, really just a, a portion of the students' work because um, there are another portion that they have to also justify such as um, some um, you know, technical things, um, maybe a bit of um, a bylaw and things like that. So much more technical, uh, but the one that we showed you was just uh, like, a, like a design brief and design proposal only. Yeah, so there are more to it basically. I'm not so sure whether, uh, um, can you want to add on or? Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Thanks, Ian, for the question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. I, I think we 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 um we read on that that is a difficulty. Um, when um we set up the brief, um, now definitely all the all the aspect um uh, is already you know set up very earlier um in the beginning of of the of the design. So. Uh, we, we didn't even expect this book project, right? Um, so it, it's, not, it's not something expected to do. Um, so meaning to say, um, all the aspect has been a uh, factor into our design brief um, into that. But to share a bit on the process, the learning process. Um, now I found uh, uh, the student, the student definitely, you know, not only the student as a, as a tutor, as a, as a um, uh, we also, Face some challenges um, now, partly due to we are not accessible um, to a site, site data collection, right? So that has been something already, you know, a, a big challenge. Now, so um, during that time, we are shifting our teaching method um, toward more the kind of deep reading uh, exercise, right? Um, so we force, <laughs> we like force, you know, the student, 
you really have to read those articles and and um so our first project is is almost like um writing a mini thesis like you know uh, like um not the thesis but i mean like it's, it's a it's a it's a writing project right so as a as a group you have to produce um um a booklet yeah a booklet with illustrator with map and the write up right the write up that to to kind of um equate your proposition um your argument into that now I, I think it's not an easy easy uh, learning. It's really um, we're facing some some challenges right uh, along the time. But uh, but gratefully, you know, um, this 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 cohort of students they are very dedicated. They are very keen learner. Uh, they are serious about the the world, and and we are so you know privileged to have this um, amazing group of of students. Um, so this is also a credit, you know, to, to all the students who, who have done an amazing job. Um, yeah, so reflect a bit on that. So after we having the, the kind of uh, a deep reading exercise to, to, to you know, to extract um, all the, all the, all the uh, whether it's a theory or, 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 yeah, it's all mm -hmm. the information, right, uh, from the talk and from the books and, and all, the, all the other sources, um, then only we are moving into... The second project, which is more into the um, the imagination, right? So um, the student could, you know, uh, choose a material, uh, choose a medium um, to 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 reflect on their idea, right? So that is not even architecture yet, right? So as I say, um, um, the the one of the student, you know, it designed a a, a card, yeah, a, a game. Um, then there's another uh, who are doing, you know, the kind of uh, um. Um, like um, like uh, underwater. Uh, there's another uh, like um, you know, like um, uh, aquarium, <laughs> even like uh, uh, artificial aquarium. Um, right. So these are all the uh, the the interesting project. We hope um not to be like conventional in in. I mean, it's like you know, not like building building, but it is something um to capture right the the interest. <laughs> then only we moving to the final project. Uh, that is a solid um, architectural proposal, right? But again, um, in this book, you will see a diverse of um, um, a diverse approaches in in terms of how they are they are sorting, um, addressing the issue, or they are providing um, the solution. There are a diversities of of uh, proposal types there. Um, yeah. So I hope that answer. Um, yeah. it, it certainly does. I just want to. I, I just really want to congratulate you two for you know this. Uh, Super oh, wonderful you. way of uh, yeah. of uh, doing uh, pedagogy, architectural education. Um, you you're very modest and you use the word uh, uh, not conventional. I would rather say you guys are very very radical. So I, I'm just wondering <laughs> whether you sense that as well that um, you know your way of doing it is not quite what everybody else in in Malaysian schools are doing. Um, but you don't have to answer that. Actually, I just want to, sorry, Guma, I'm taking too much time, but I, I have a little no question any, any housing. I, I'm particularly interested because uh, I have some interest in indigenous identities. Um, so when you early on said there was a fire and the, the Bajaos were moved to live on land or something like that, yeah. mm. and they temporary. didn't like it, and uh, temporary, okay, so they didn't like it. So they prefer to be on that very nice picture that you showed of the house with the stilts in the water. So my question about housing was because I was looking for housing in your projects and you didn't show housing. Uh, I'm just wondering whether uh, you have explored the kind of contemporary housing that can be an alternative to those very nice you know, houses standing on, on, on stilts in the water. Uh, mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. Yeah, that, that's that's where my question is coming from. Mm. Um, in terms of housing schemes, um, because they are also, I mean, we, we despite like the craziness, we still have to abide to certain um, how to say guidelines. So for the final year, they they do have to have a, a small housing components in their design. But as per your question, whether is there a proposal that focuses only on housing, especially like like the typology, the the evolution of the housing. Um, uh, we, we we don't have uh, we can't really um, we can't really remember like a specific project but um, 
maybe there were some, but it's not like that person, that student didn't really focus entirely on that. But I think uh, I agree with you because those uh, study of housing typology from the boat houses into the still houses is, is such an amazing uh, studies um, as, as written by uh, Dr. Dr. Izik and also uh, Professor Cynthia on the evolution of housing. And the, they even have their own specific names for each space in the house. Um, so it's, it's really um, interesting if we could have explored that further, yeah. I agree with you. I was, I was thinking more from the overall uh, uh, typology, uh, the morphology of the, we call it Taman here like in, in online, we say Taman this, Taman that, because you showed a satellite picture of all the uh, houses sort of uh -huh. thing, mm -hmm. and they're all kind of equally spread out. Yeah. And I think your comment was, uh, it's it's kind of messy. Did you say messy? You said uh -huh. something, right? Chaotic. Chaotic. <laughs> Chaotic. <laughs> yeah. But, but that, that, that's the, that's a, has a negative connotation. I'm just oh, wondering really? whether you did find out from the Bajaos that mm. uh, maybe that's the way they like it. They want to live like that. Mm. Perhaps, perhaps. Anyway, that, that's um, a, yeah. something that came like, like, a, like a more ad hoc um, yeah, built, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as, as they need, as the demand or as the user needs something, then they add on. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a, yeah. a kind of a very, in, yeah, perhaps that oh. is. Um, <laughs> Your next, you project, Farah, your next project, Farah. Your next project. Thank you, you very much. much. All right. Thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you, Ian. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you Ian, for th those questions. Okay, I think we that's all the time we have for tonight. Again, thank you to Dr. Kenkun and Architect Farah for this very exciting sharing. Also, uh, if you um, if you would like to, guys, uh, please support them. I, I do have a book myself, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you um, did you uh, paste the link? Um, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can yep. share. Things, so. Yeah, but but anyway, you just um you know search like Bajautopia, like googling it, um you will find um the link tree, or you can also visit our Facebook page or the Instagram, um. Like Bajato. You can't find another Bajotopia, only us. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a word that we created. Um, so you Google it, you will find it. Um, yeah. <laughs> great, great. All right. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you so much. All right. Masa, um, thanks, thanks. Amazing yeah. organizer. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Bye. So Bye. just an ending note. So okay. do keep in touch with the, uh, Masa's Instagram and Facebook for the next online lecture. And if you guys would like to view uh, the previous lectures, uh, the previous series, it's in um, our YouTube link as well. And yeah, if you have, if you all haven't already done yet, you can also register to um, to for PAM membership at www.mypam.org.my. There are a lot of um, benefits for architecture students. And yeah, until then, have a nice night, and we'll catch you guys um, catch you on next time. Okay, thanks. All right, take Everyone. care. Bye, right, take care. All right, thanks. Good night. Bye, Jason.